Hey everyone, this is Shane Hennessy here. In today's video, I want to bring you through what it takes to run a successful crowdfunding campaign. Some of you may know that back in 2017, I ran a campaign on Fundit for my album Marrakesh. It ended up being funded 159% of its target, raising 8,757 euro. And this is a target I hit in just four days. I want to bring you through the steps of creating a campaign. Uh, some important things to keep in mind at all stages of the campaign to maximize its impact and Also what you should prepare before you launch your campaign as well before going any further I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel and thanks so much in advance So the the first thing I want to talk about is putting a campaign together the basis of every campaign is essentially the same You know give me money to make my project happen and you get a reward that relates to my project and then the more you give the more you get as a reward uh, the bare bones of any campaign are the campaign video the write-up or the campaign description uh, which is essentially what you want to achieve why you're looking for the money and uh, the rewards you offer for supporting uh, the campaign so it seems easy but there are a lot of things to consider um, every campaign should have a good video with a very clear purpose. If you took anyone off the street and you got them to watch your campaign video, they should be able to tell you fairly quickly who you are, what you do, what your video is about, and essentially why you want their money. Um, you have to remember that your video is a little bit like a virtual showcase. Uh, people, A lot of people are going to be exposed to you for the very first time. They may not know about you, and this may be their introduction to you. So the video you make will probably pop up in places well into the future, not just the campaign. It's an important thing to keep in mind. Um, for my campaign video, uh, I took all the footage I could find of me performing um, in different settings, you know, performing live and in interviews, things like that. And I spliced it together to make a very dynamic video. So I spoke a little bit about myself, about my background, what I was aiming to do as a result of the campaign, and also what rewards were on offer. Anyone who comes across that video now should be able to get a good idea about what I do if that's their first time seeing me. Um, the one thing that I did badly in my video is that the audio isn't as good as it should have been. I depended on my camera audio in this enormous art gallery um, for my vocal sound. So if I were doing that again, I would have my proper setup now with microphones or a little lav mic or something. The, the write-up or the campaign description, um, it's essentially the about section of your campaign. So this should go into more detail than your video does. You can get really specific here about the costs of the project, the length it'll, of time it'll take to complete it, um, all the nuts and bolts of the campaign. Some platforms limit how much you can write, uh, but it's a good idea to give people as much relevant information as you possibly can. Um, and you want to make sure that it feels personal as well. You know, you don't want this to sound like you're in an, an essay competition. You want people to feel like you wrote this thoughtfully and with, you know, with a bit of your personality shining through as well. The rewards then for supporting the campaign, these are something you should spend an awful lot of time thinking about. Um, in general, the rewards start at a small amount of money, generally anywhere between, you know, a euro and 10 euros or whatever that is in your currency. And it can go up to thousands for the really bespoke rewards. Um, at every level, you really have to think about not only you know what can I offer as a reward, but also how much will it cost me? How many can I afford to offer? Are there extra costs to providing awards, like travel costs or shipping costs or, tr or manufacturing costs? What's the profile of my followers and what can they afford to spend? Um, what would I usually charge for a reward like this if it weren't a crowdfunding campaign? Um, what are similar people in my field asking for? Will this reward suit everyone who chooses it? Questions along those lines. Think in depth about each reward. Um, I feel that the more personalized you can make a reward, the better and the more likely it is that people will go for it, that, that they'll choose it. So for example, asking for a small price difference between a CD and a signed CD, that's usually enough to sway people to go for a signed CD offering personalized pieces of art, or in my case, offering to arrange a song uh, or a tune of their choice on the guitar, that can be a great gift um, for people, you know, to get for someone special in their lives, and you can market it that way as well. So make sure you make a big deal 
of this when you're posting about the campaign. You want to remind people uh, who are following the campaign that these are available and it might make it a little bit more likely that they'll choose one of those options. When it gets into the more expensive rewards, you could offer to create something unique for a supporter or, you know, for example, to perform at a location of their choosing or something like that. There are a few of people out there who do choose these more expensive options. I played a couple of private shows as a result of my crowdfunding campaign. To entice people to pledge during the campaign, you might also think about offering some kind of campaign only reward. So that could be like a product or a creation or a service, something that's only available to the people who support your campaign and that is unavailable to the general public. So if you're an author, this could be a short story. Um, if you're a musician, you know this could be a one-off single or an EP or something like that. In general, it's something you can offer that would make pledging to support your campaign worth doing because the recipient feels like they're getting something special. So moving on to platforms and the financial considerations. Um, each platform does the same job. I'm not gonna go through every single crowdfunding service that there is. The top ones that come to mind are uh, Fundit in Ireland, GoFundMe, Kickstarter, and Indiegogo. They're the first um, few that come to mind when I think about crowdfunding. They all essentially do the same job, but they each have pros and cons. So the main things to look out for when you're choosing a platform uh, would be, you know, what rate of commission do they charge? What's the minimum and maximum length of a campaign? Are they an all for nothing platform or are they a keep what you raise platform? and when do they take payment? All of these are really important questions to consider because they all affect what your target amount will be. So for example, if you need $5,000 to cover the costs of your project and the platform charges 8% commission, well now you actually need to have $5,400 as a goal because that's $5,000 plus the 8%. Similarly, your campaign length is hugely important. A longer campaign doesn't mean you're going to attract the support of more people the longer you leave it up for. Um, I think campaigns of like seven and eight weeks, they start to annoy people. Um, I had my campaign set to last for one month, but I hit the target within four days because of the preparation that I did. And that's something I'll talk about later in the video. Um, another thing to consider is that some people will want to save and put aside money to support you. So allowing for like a month long campaign or so and preparation beforehand gives those people the opportunity to do that. Um, some platforms are all or nothing platforms, which means that they only pay out if you reach your target. Whereas the keep what you raise platforms, uh, they pay out even if you don't hit your target. It might seem like a safer bet to go with the keep what you raise platform, but the only point I'll make about that is that you may not feel like you have to put as much effort into your campaign if you believe you're going to get some money out of it no matter what happens. Whereas the pressure of a deadline uh, and a funding amount might actually spur you to work a little bit harder in terms of reaching out to people and you might ultimately raise more money. It's not a fact, it's just something to think about. Um, another important difference between the platforms is when they actually take the payments. This is something that's very commonly overlooked and misunderstood. Most of the platforms that I'm aware of don't take a payment when a backer enters their payment details. They take it when the campaign ends or a day or two afterwards which is why they refer to people's monetary support as a pledge and not a payment or a donation. Um, some platforms allow for the payment to be taken during the campaign. I know Indiegogo um, allows this, but you have to be aware if you're using a platform that takes payment when a campaign ends. Some people might not be aware of this when they're actually pledging. So they might think it's like online shopping where an amount gets immediately debited. Um, it's a good idea to mention this in your direct messages to people, especially if they've told you that they have pledged to support your campaign. Um, and, and the other thing is people might have changed their card details as well in the space between pledging and uh, the money actually being taken. Um, so, you know, with that in mind, you have to be aware that the total amount on screen that says, you know, you know, we have raised $4,000, that may not actually be the amount that you get into your bank account once the whole campaign is over. So as I said, it's best to let the people know that the money will be taken on the date that the platform gives you. Here's a really important note about the money you raise. Crowdfunding platforms are, they're obviously not free money platforms, nor are they income streams. They're a way for people to prepay you for your work. So all of the money you ask for should be budgeted and itemized in the description on the campaign page. Um, you can't just pluck a figure out of your head and aim for that. You do need to show what you're going to spend the money on. 
um, and that you're doing so in an efficient way. So in putting your budget together, uh, shop around for the best deals on the materials that you might need. So it might be CD or DVD printing, uh, might be rehearsal spaces or supplies or external services. Um, it's just like any other business. Uh, keep your costs as low as you're able to. So if you're asking for 5,400 euros and 400 euros is going to the platform as commission, you now need to count for 5,000 euros of spending. Um, the more precise you are about this spending, the more confidence people will have in supporting you because you look like you've done your homework. The preparation you do before your campaign goes live online is the key to a successful crowdfunding campaign. The launch of the campaign should never be the first time people hear about the campaign. You should announce it maybe two weeks in advance and start getting in touch with people to start shoring up support and explain to them what the campaign is if they've never come across a crowdfunding campaign before. Uh, a great tip is to go through the crowdfunding websites and to see what other people in the same category as you have done. Um, I looked at all of the successful projects that musicians had done on Fundit to get ideas as to what I might be able to offer, what I could write, and what I could put in my video. Consider also the timing of your campaign. You know, major holidays and public events can really sway how people spend or save. So give yourself every opportunity. Try not to clash with anything if possible. Also consider if there's anything, you know, major happening in your life that could get in the way of your management of the campaign. You know, birthdays, exams, family events. Um, take these into account before choosing when you're going to run the campaign because you have to ensure that you're giving yourself the time to execute the campaign properly. The one thing I always say to people who have asked me advice about a crowdfunded campaign is that you need to treat it as a full-time job. Um, if you've seen politicians during an election, you know, what do they do during a campaign? They're doing interviews on the radio, they're on TV, they're knocking on doors, sending emails, putting ads everywhere. And to a lesser degree, to some degree, you should be doing the same thing. So what I'd recommend is before a campaign to try and organize media appearances on like local radio and TV, national radio and TV, if possible, local and national newspapers, magazines, blogs, review platforms, essentially anywhere people read and consume media. You know, try to get info about your campaign onto it. On the third day of my campaign, my appearance on the most popular national Sunday radio show in Ireland, which is called Sunday with Miriam O'Callaghan on RT Radio 1, it caused a huge increase in pledges, and the following day I hit my initial target of €5,000. So it, organizing those media appearances is really, really effective for your campaign. Aside from media exposure, you really have to put the time and effort into contacting people directly, telling them what your campaign is about and asking them for the support. It can feel really strange asking for money. It's something most people dislike. I definitely don't like and didn't like doing it. But direct contact with people is 100% the best way to get pledges for your campaign. Now, this mostly happens between your social media sites and your direct email list, if you've got one. Um, and obviously, the more people you have connected to you, the, the better. But direct messaging and emailing is much more effective than making public posts on any of your social media sites or sending mass emails from an email service. Sending those individualized, personalized messages one-on-one uh, -on -one is definitely 100% the best way to go about this. Be mindful as well that if you're copying and pasting the same message over and over to people, that the social media platforms might treat you like a spammer or a bot and they might block you from contacting or posting. And you don't want this happening in the middle of your crowdfunding campaign. The same thing goes for emails as well. You're allowed a certain amount per day. I think it's somewhere in the region of about two emails, or sorry, 200 emails every 24 hours for Gmail. Um, you might be able to find that information for your own email service provider. Um, but this comes back to what I said earlier about reaching out to people before the campaign actually launches so that you can use your time efficiently. You know, once you start telling people about the campaign, that's when you start doing all this work. Um, if you've got a website, the campaign should also feature on the homepage of your site uh, from the day you announce your campaign right through until the end of it. A useful tip is to have some money ready to kick off the campaign on day one. Now, some people do this themselves and others get um, you know, people organized to pledge on the launch date as soon as the campaign goes live. So if you're launching at like three o'clock on a certain date, they'll organize people to put in money at three o'clock on that date. Now, this is really important because if people see that something is being supported, they're more likely to support it as well. Um, imagine it this way. If you saw two restaurants side by side and one of them was full of people 
and you see a great atmosphere through the window and the other one is totally empty, which one are you more likely to walk into? You're going to walk into the one that has people in it, of course. And it's the same thing here. People support things that they see other people supporting because psychologically it gives them confidence. You know, they're confident that other people have judged that it's worth supporting, so they feel better about supporting it as well. On the opposite end of the campaign, it can be really harrowing to get to 95% of your goal and then to run out of time. Uh, you know, you might think about having an amount set aside to pledge in the final hour, you know, in case that you nearly make it, but you're running out of time to get people to pledge. Um, in theory, of course, this means that you haven't actually covered all the costs of creating your project. Um, but the good press that comes with successfully running a crowdfunding campaign is often worth it. Another thing to consider is to plan out the updates to your campaign before your campaign. Um, so this could be like pictures or videos or the special campaign only content that I mentioned earlier. But having everything ready to go in one folder uh, on your computer definitely saves you an awful lot of time when you're in the middle of a campaign. Now let's say you launch a campaign and it goes amazingly well and you hit your target well before your deadline. So on one hand, congratulations, uh, your campaign was a success. On the other hand, what's now going to entice people who wanted to support you now that you've got all the money that you asked for? Um, if this happens, you should have a secondary goal in mind. So in other words, what would I do if I got 150% of my target or 200% of my target? In my case, I decided to upgrade the launch venue of my album Marrakesh to the National Concert Hall in Dublin because the extra money that I raised paid for the costs of upgrading to the concert hall from my original venue. Um, remember as well that if you raise more than your target, you're actually raising more than what it costs to realize your project. So that is classed as profit and therefore it's taxable income. Just something to keep in mind. Uh, once your campaign is over, make sure you write to everyone who contributed and say thank you. Uh, I think this is it, probably the most crucial part of the campaign after contacting people directly, you know, looking for pledges. Because this begins the personal relationship that you have with each of your supporters if one doesn't already exist. I feel like I've built my career to date off making personal relationships with my fans and my supporters. So it's really worth investing the time in sending personalized messages to everyone who contributed to you. You'll most likely get a spreadsheet from your platform at the end of the campaign with the names and email addresses of all of the supporters and what they are due. Um, it's a great opportunity to add these people to your direct mailing list and keep them in the loop about everything that you're doing. Um, if you live in the EU, like I do, you'll have to probably ask each of these people permission to add them to your mailing list because of uh, GDPR. But if they've contributed to your campaign, they'll most likely be fine about it. I do have a lot more tips apart from the ones I talked about in this video, and I'd be happy to do a one-on-one -on -one with you about your campaign um, if you're interested, if you're thinking about launching a crowdfunding campaign soon or you want to get some more information about it. Um, send me a private message via my website, shanehennessy.ie, and I'll get back to you about it. Um, if you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate if you were to subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you have any tips of your own about crowdfunding campaigns, please leave them in the comments below because I'd like to read them and I'm sure everyone else would as well. Um, but until next time, thanks for watching. I'm Shane Hennessy and I'll see you again soon.